did. Was each of them already starting to think about how to save his own skin? I didn't know at that time whether any of the, that the defendants would wind up testifying against the other defendants and cut some kind of a deal for themselves. In fact, it would be George Delgado who ultimately cuts a deal. The man that betrayed his mentor would turn on his friends. He flipped right away. We made a deal with the devil. We wanted to know the information that we couldn't know because we weren't there. Who is it going to be that's going to be the least culpable, even though they're all bad? Dorball initially admitted to the abduction, but then stopped talking. Lugo had fled to the Bahamas, but was soon apprehended as well. The trial began on February 24, 1998. It took six months. There were 1,200 items of evidence. And two juries to bring closure for the families of Griga and Ferton. The assistant state attorney was Gail Levine. This was a life-changing case for me. This case was the reason why I'm a career prosecutor. They slapped me, they hit me, they... For star witness Mark Schiller, seeing the men who had tortured him in handcuffs was a moment to save her. So, sort of a kind of a power trip thing. I was the one with the power, and just they had lost all their power, so... And for investigator Ed Du Bois... I loved it. You know, I looked every one of them right smack in the eye, and I just loved testifying against those bastards. The evidence brought forth by Gail Levine was unassailable. The verdicts came in. Daniel Lugo is guilty of first-degree murder. It took only 14 minutes for the jury to decide to sentence Lugo to death. 18 minutes for Dorbrey. It was a, a sobering moment. I remember exactly where I was, how I felt, how it sounded. <laughs> for Mark Schiller, after four years, finally vindication payback, revenge. He has returned from South America numerous times to help the prosecution. Now he comes back to help one more time. Marcelo Schiller did not have to come back for the penalty phase. He wasn't needed, but he did. Yeah, I came back. He reads an impact statement that everyone agrees is incredibly powerful. He gets off the stand, and then... Schiller came all the way back from Colombia at the behest of the assistant state attorney on the case, Gail Levine not knowing what was about to happen to him. And as he walks out of my courtroom door, the FBI grabs him. The FBI has just three words to say to him. That you're under arrest. Revenge is a tricky thing. Want it too badly, and it can come back to bite you. Marcelo Schiller had helped put away his tormentors, but in doing so, helped the feds build a case against himself. He comes back and takes a stand, and as he walks out of my courtroom door, the FBI grabs him and charges him with Medicare fraud. Like so many other Miami stories, things turned out to be not quite what they seemed. Remember his nutritional company? The feds say he used it to bill 14.6 million in fraudulent Medicare charges. The FBI was waiting for him, and nobody can tell me that Gail Levine didn't know about that, okay? I think Gail Levine was in a difficult position. If the feds are investigating, they're investigating. I was very focused on what I needed to do. Whatever the federal government was doing was really not my concern. There are times when the federal government has its investigation, and we have ours. And sometimes we coordinate those, and sometimes we do not. We intentionally and respectfully keep them separate. In the end, Schiller pled guilty to a single count of Medicare fraud. At the last minute, he received help from an unexpected source. I was asked uh, by his lawyer if I would go testify in federal court on Marcelo Schiller's behalf, um, which is unheard of. You know, judges just don't do that. But there just was something different about this case. That man was tortured worse than a prisoner of war. It was um, horrific. Bam! <laughs> it's just something in me told me that um, it should be taken into consideration in the sentencing for the Medicare fraud. And what of George Delgado? In a story full of revenge, perhaps he got the final payback by fingering Mark Schiller to the FBI. He served nine years but is now free. His new wife told us he's a changed man who wants to put these events behind him. When you look at all, Danny Lugo was bad. 
you know. But George Delgado, in my mind, was worse. This is not your typical case. Um, then this is not your typical story with a happy ending. They almost got away with it. If Marcelo Schiller had died, they might very well have gotten away with that crime. I think everything happened for a reason. Um, I'm maybe I'm still learning what the reason was. Well, it's a story that has everything in it. It has fast cars and beautiful women and drugs and millions of dollars, kidnappings and crime. And in that sense, yeah, it's a it's a Miami story. As for the lack of resolution, the lack of a clear hero, I think that's just life. Mark Schiller served 46 months. The that they made to kidnap Schiller so they could force him to return the money, if this case wasn't so tragic, would be comical. It looks like he's home. They were so inept. They made attempt after attempt, hiding under blankets in his front yard, dressed as ninjas, to capture him, only to be thwarted by the headlights of an approaching car. Abort, abort. And then they're running through backyards, yelling, abort, abort, like this is some kind of uh, CIA mission. Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is. Duck, duck. There were some things that happened in hindsight that I see now, but at the time, I pay no attention to him. But practice makes perfect. Is he looking over here? And the gang from the Sun Gym was about to get lucky. Okay, all right, let's go. You ready? Don't miss the sun. Mark Schiller is on his way home from his restaurant. Now, 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 now. I usually parked in front. For that day, for some reason, I parked in the back. All of a sudden, three guys approach me from behind. I thought they wanted to steal the car. So I was like, if you want the car, take it. They have tasers. They have guns. And they just begin beating and mostly tasing him. Come on, come on! They drag him into a van. Hurry up, get him in the car! I was terrified. I just thought it was a hit. They were just going to take me somewhere, shoot me. Take him up! They put tape around my eyes. They put me in between the driver's seat and the first bench. Yeah, yeah! Woo! The van races away, and one of the kidnappers makes a phone call. The eagle has landed. And for Mark Schiller, the first hints that this isn't random, it's personal. Shut it! You don't have the right to live the life you do. One of the guys said, you have no right to live the life you do. And I go, oh, so they know me. <laughs> they were having a great time. You thought that they won the lottery. Grab that watch, man. That's they take his presidential Rolex, his jewelry, and then suddenly drive into a warehouse. So they took me out of the van. And that's when basically the torture begins. <laughs> then they started beating me with a bad shock. You know, punching. They were taking turns, I guess. And finally, the motive becomes clear. We want to talk about some of your assets. Give us a list of it. Come on. We want a list of your assets, and I go, what for? I wasn't really panicked because whatever they wanted, they weren't going to get it if I was dead. But if you want to get to someone, threaten the ones they love. Your pretty wife and your two beautiful, beautiful children. They told me, if you don't cooperate and give us what we want, we're gonna bring your wife and uh, kids here. We're gonna take turns raping your wife. Over and over <laughs> again. And we're going to um, chain your kids to the wall. Schiller says in that one instant, everything changed. Okay, I'll do it. All right, start talking. So whatever you want, you can have it, but let's make a deal. You let my wife and kids go out of the country, and you can have whatever you want. That's the deal, you know, because that was their leverage. And you once they lost their leverage, that was it. At least I thought so, anyway. But the kidnappers had a different kind of leverage in mind. It's ringing. 